Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. This equation actually came up in another video that I made and published on October 29th. And I'm going to go ahead and share the link here with you so you can go ahead and check this video out. Okay? So, we end up with something like this and we said that, well, this equation has no real solutions. What does that mean? Does that mean it also doesn't have any complex solutions? That's what we're going to explore. So let's go ahead and write this equation a little differently, like 3 to the power x equals negative 5 to the power x. Obviously, something I can't do is kind of embed the negative inside the parentheses, so I can't really do this. Because I don't know if x is going to be a positive or negative quantity, or even rational or irrational, or even real, right? So that's a lot of complications. Instead, we're going to do the following. Divide both sides by 5 to the power x, but leave the negative on the right hand side. So let's do it. 3 to the x divided by 5 to the x equals negative 5 to the x divided by 5 to the x. And these two cancel out, leaving us with negative 1 on the right hand side, which is cool, right? Well, kind of. Now, this can be written as 3 over 5 to the power x, and that equals negative 1. Obviously, you can tell from here that there are no real solutions to this equation. So we're going to be looking for complex solutions because any positive number to a power x, if x is real, cannot be negative. How can you solve for complex solutions? We're going to complexify this problem. Not the left-hand side completely, but more on the right-hand side. Because we have an x, so hopefully x will take care of all the possibilities. Now, here's what we're going to do. First of all, we need to think about how we can write 3 fifths as a complex number using Euler's formula. So Euler's formula says that if you have a complex number z, then you can write it as r times e to the power i theta, where r is the modulus, which is the distance from 0, and theta is the angle. Okay? So we've got to find it. 3 over 5 is a real number. So real, real numbers are on the real axis. Therefore, their angle is going to be like 0 radians or 2 pi radians, or any multiple of 2 pi, right? So let's go ahead and write the 3 fits as follows. 3 over 5 times e to the power 2 pi i. I'm just going to use 2 pi for this. You can also use uh, 4 pi or 2 pi n. I don't think that's going to make a huge difference. Let's see what that is going to look like. And for the negative 1, I have to think about it. It's a negative real number. Therefore, its theta or angle is going to be pi radians because it's, it's what uh, the angle is with the positive x-axis, right? Or the real axis. So we're going to write this as, an, obviously, the modulus is 1. So it's going to be 1 times e to the power i times pi. But I'd like to add multiples of 2 pi to this, 2 pi n, and then multiply the whole thing by i. Make sense? Let's go to erase this area, clean up a little bit. So now we're going to deal with this. How do you deal with this? You can log both sides. Let's go ahead and log both sides with the natural log, then ln this to the power x equals ln this. And when you ln something, if it's something like e to the power something, then from properties of logs, this is going to be the answer. Because ln e is equal to 1, you're going to move the power. In this case, we have the power x, so we can kind of move it to the front. And then we're going to get the ln of a product. How do you ln a product? It's actually made up of r uh, e to the i theta. So when you ln this, you're going to get ln r plus e to the power i theta. Because ln that actually is not e to the power i theta. It's just i theta. That's going to be the imaginary part. Okay? So bring the x to the front and then write this as a sum of two logs. ln 3 over 5 plus ln this, so it's 2 pi i, and that equal to i times, now you can definitely write this as pi times 2n plus 1, so kind of like 2n plus 1 times pi, or you can put the pi here if you want, you can kind of write it as i pi, and then multiply by 2n plus 1, which indicates odd multiples of pi, and then you can go ahead and divide both sides by this expression. So that should give you the value of x, right? So x should be 2n plus 1 pi.
pi i or i pi, however you want to write it, divided by ln 3 over 5 plus 2 pi i. Now here's a good question. Instead of 2 pi i, if we used 2 pi ki here, would that make a difference and all, would all solutions satisfy the original equation? I have a feeling it's not going to. But let's go ahead and take a look at this version, which is a little simpler. Now notice that we have a complex number at the bottom, so you want to get rid of that, so multiply by the conjugate. That's going to be ln 3 over 5 minus 2 pi i, and the numerator is going to be multiplied by the same thing. And then of course in the numerator you're supposed to distribute, multiply, and this is purely imaginary, so basically what you need to do is you have a real number and a, c a complex or imaginary number. When imaginary numbers are multiplied like these two, i squared is going to give you negative 1. And so that's going to be the real part. The new real part is going to look like this. We're going to have a plus sign because the minus sign will be negated. And uh, that's going to give us 2n plus 1 pi times 2 pi. And the i squared is already taken care of. And then we're going to multiply it by this. And that's going to give us the imaginary part, which is 2n plus 1, I'm not sure how to write it, times ln 3 over 5 times pi i. And then the whole thing is going to be divided by the sum of two squares. Remember, when we multiply two conjugates, we do get sum of two squares, right? Remember that? So it's going to be ln 3 over 5 squared plus 4 pi squared. So that should be good enough, but if you wanted to be uh, go a little fancy, you can go ahead and separate this into, this is going to be 4n plus 2 pi squared, and then that will be divided by ln 3 over 5 squared. Uh, by the way, don't get me wrong, it's not 3 over 5 that's squared, it's the ln of 3 over 5, so we have to use an extra set of parentheses, plus 4 pi squared, plus, and then the imaginary part will be divided by the denominator, 2n plus 1 times ln 3 over 5 over, again we're going to write this ln 3 over 5 squared plus 4 pi squared and times i. Therefore, the real part of our complex number is going to be this and the imaginary part is going to be this. Therefore, the answer was written as a complex number in standard form and ob obviously you can call it x equals a plus bi if you want, where a is this one and B is this one. It just makes it look simpler, but that's actually uh, an oversimplification, but that's going to be the answer. All right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.